up guys so welcome to our first ever overseas hotel review and today we will be reviewing Dorset City London yay if you're wondering why is there overseas hotel review it is because we took a trip in November and December to the United Kingdom so do check out the rest of the videos of my travel series and it will be a great support so carrying on into this video we will be reviewing Dorset City London a four-star hotel located right beside London Aldergate which apparently is located right in the center of the financial district and apologies in advance because we shot this at around 10 to 11 p.m after a long travel day from edinburgh so nevertheless let us begin with the hotel review What's up guys, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about the check-in experience overall. I personally feel that the hotel feels like very hood, you know, like, you know, those ganglands surrounded by very dark areas. Yeah, it gives me that kind of vibe. So I don't know, it's maybe it's just because it's overseas, it's London. The check-in experience timing is 3 minutes and 45 seconds, which is the fastest check-in experience, is it? Yes. And for the friendliness of the staff, I would say they are neutral, they aren't bad neither they are good and partially because they speak very english accent so i can't really understand what they say but i know there is no room service for your information i chose this hotel for the view but apparently we are on the third floor and from the looks of it we are facing construction overall the check-in experience was really fast because there's nobody else in front of us we check in at about 8 pm so relatively fast and one more thing that y'all might want to take note is that there's a deposit of 60 pounds needed for this hotel so on to the room tour. What's up guys? So let's begin the room tour of Dorset City London Superior Double Room. So sorry for the mess, but we just checked in. It's already 9.30 and we are really tired. So I'm still doing this video, a really short review for you guys. So as you step into the room, the room itself, you are greeted by a very large mirror with the toilet on this side. And the toilet, it looks relatively small. And according to Rose, she said there was supposed to be a bathtub, right? I think so, but don't have. And in the toilet, it's a single vanity. The entire toilet is really, very really small. Lah. So, and the soap itself, they're all attached to the wall. You cannot take it out. I guess they don't want you to steal it. Lah. And the toilet comes with a door which is black in color, which looks damn cool. Uh. Toilet area looks relatively small. Square in size, two toilet rolls with two towels on top. The rack looks like it's gonna fall. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna break. Mind you, this is a four-star hotel. And for the toilet area size, relatively spacious. However, there's no bidet. Uh, so you can't clean your ass properly. Yeah, spacious. Legs spread out wide open, heating a little bit, but I mean, I'm over spreading. And to the shower area, there is the hand shower and the rain shower. So, rain shower. And one thing I would like to add to this hotel review for London, because since it's winter, being able to control your water temperature is of utmost importance. If you cannot control the water, you're gonna spend like five, 10 minutes figuring out how to control. So, from the looks of it, there is a exact temperature of 40 degrees. So, it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to control the temperature. For the floor and the wall texture of the toilet, everything appears to be marble, which is quite nice. Lah. I really like it. And the only thing I don't really fancy is the size of the vanity area. Like the length of the table is really, really narrow, which you can't put anything. Lah. Very, very small. Don't like. And stepping on the toilet, there is the thermostat with the do not disturb, clean up and please wait sign for the outside of your room. And then stepping to the living area, on your right here, you have your mini bar area, which is not really a mini bar, it's like just a plate of stuff that they give you. And this shop bag actually is quite nice. I really like it. It's like those butter cookie from the tin can that you all eat when. Water kettle, light, and over here it is your fridge, which is empty. And above the fridge itself has your cups, your wine glass, your transparent cup, and your coffee cup. And then this can over here is basically for your ice. And connected to the mini bar area is your wardrobe. Wardrobe wise, very, very big, but I realized that. Four star hotel eh, how can you expect this kind of door? But for the wardrobe, it has the overhead compartment which has nothing. You've only got pillow because we are only given two pillows, which I'm quite pissed. 
I want more pillows because I'm lonely. And moving on down to the wardrobe itself, there is a safe. Over here, there are three drawers. First drawer itself has your laundry and what's this? Shoe shine paper. Wow, hey, first time I see this. Eh? Second drawer has your hair dryer and the last drawer is empty. Moving to the other side of the wardrobe, basically you only have five hangers and that's about it. In moving on to the sleeping area, there is this bed which is two single beds combined to make it slightly bigger than the queen bed with two bedside tables and the lamps on both sides with Rose sitting on the bed, still deciding what to eat after 200 hours. And in front of the bed, there is this TV, LG TV. Uh, I doubt it's a smart TV, which we also probably won't use. But yes, you can use HDMI to connect to this TV, which is really narrow. Your hands has to be very small. Uh. Below the TV itself is your luggage holder and right beside it is your study area with the phone, lamp and chair. And moving on to this, which is just a random sofa chair they put at the window itself. So to be honest, I don't think this is necessary. They just try to make it more comforting, which I don't think it's needed lah. Waste a lot of space. Oh, one more thing. And the floor is fully covered with carpet, apart from the toilet. And to be honest, I, I personally feel that overseas hotel that use carpet floors, I wouldn't say they're exactly clean, but I don't know why I'm still lying on the floor because just habit lah. But yeah, compared to Singapore, I think Singapore ones are a lot cleaner. And for overall cleanliness of the room, I would say it's okay, no complaints. Areas that we always use are clean, but of course, I doubt above the wardrobe or like in between the small gap. I don't know why the wall or small gap there is probably gonna be dusty lah, but who would ever go up there and test the dust apart from me? And yeah, this basically wraps up the room tour of Dorset City. London. London. Superior double room. Superior double room. And we're gonna move on to surrounding amenities. Oh yeah, there's no in-room dining service, so we can't do that segment of the video lah. Too bad. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the surrounding amenities right now. I'm gonna use an uh, iPad for reference, so don't mind the light. For Dorset City itself, it's located right beside Outgate. I want to say MRT. <laughs> for Dorset City, it's located just right beside Outgate's Tube, which is the last train of the Metropolitan Line. And right opposite the hotel itself, there are a lot of eating options you can choose from. If you're looking for like a supermarket or a 7-Eleven, right behind the hotel, there's Tesco, which is one of the 7-Elevens over here in London. And Dorset City Hotel is just located 15 minutes away from the ever prominent tourist attraction, the London Bridge. And crossing the bridge itself is just a 5 minutes walk away to Borough Market, which is filled with delicious food, which we will be checking out tomorrow. Like, finally. Can I eat oysters? And so basically that wraps up the amenities. Nothing much here because I am a foreigner. I don't really know the ins and outs of this city. So that is what I got from Google Maps lah. Okay, one thing I want to say about this room is that it is very, very dark. I'm sorry if this video is too noisy because of the ISO is reaching 5,000 to almost 10,000, but it is what it is. The room is quite dark. There's no ceiling lights, apparently. It's only cove lighting and lights from the lamps yeah as you can see no ceiling lights cold light table light bed lamp another bed lamp yeah so basically that's all the lights in this room it's quite dark and rose has an issue with tissue problems now i'll let her explain i'm the one who always eat tissues at everywhere i go so technically when i just came in this room i use one like like one small piece of tissue then I'm, when I'm about to get the second piece it's gone that means they never feel la. and you were saying you eat tissue yeah I eat. it's not tissue it's toilet paper what's up guys so I'm going to tell you more about the room info and for this room itself we booked it through Agoda and we'll be staying here for two nights and it's staying across the weekend. So weekends, as you can tell, even in Singapore, room rates are a lot more expensive. So the total cost of this room for two nights is 600 and what? $42. $642. You must be going booms, right? But it's basically the cost of one Fullerton Bay View room. And yeah, 600, which is about 300 plus pounds. So 600 within this vicinity, it's actually one of the cheapest hotels that you can get and yeah as you can tell london is expensive la. even their food is like 
30 to 60 pounds per meal and I'm like, I'm just broke lah. What's included in the room itself is nothing. No breakfast, no late checkout, no early check-in and basically it's just the room lah. So sadly nothing much else I can show you all. And yeah, I really wanted the breakfast though. So yeah, basically that's all for the room info. Basically this wraps up the room tour and the amenities. So tomorrow we'll try to check out the facilities wise and see what they have to offer. here in the 24 hours gym at Dorset City and overall it looks not the best lah. There are dumbbell weights but I think they're in kg so it's up to I don't know I assume it's 20 kg because 18 is over there. One treadmill, one bicycle, two bicycle, two treadmills there, one bicycle over there. Cable machines over here. Ah, towels and water bottles provided which is really really good and also all these other core machines that you can use and it's 24 hours, it's unsupervised and yeah the only thing is that it's on the second floor according to Londoners, it's first floor lah but to Singaporeans, it's second floor and the view wise, uh, pretty much nothing lah so overall in my opinion, I would not actually recommend Dorset City because the rooms, it was very basic same goes to the facilities, nothing really worth mentioning. And for me, the highlight of this entire hotel is really the location because it's just right beside the London Tube of Eldergate Station and making our way to the hotel was very, very accessible. And another thing that I do want to highlight is the 24 hours cafe slash restaurant which you basically can go down at any time of the day to have a meal. So we will not be giving our usual long ass opinions at the ending like our usual hotel reviews but here are our ratings. So welcome to the end of this video. I do hope that you have enjoyed our very first hotel overseas review and I really do hope that there will be more to come in the coming year. And just to give you a heads up, there is one more hotel review coming right up right at the end of this month which is located in London, a 5 star $600 hotel. So do check that out. And it's also Rose's most favourite hotel. So if she could have included it in her list last year, that would be her most favourite, not Fullerton Bay. Or clan. And just another plug, do remember to check out my UK travel series. I did really put a lot of effort and it will really mean a lot if you guys can support me in this series and also supporting me to go 1k subs at the end of this year. And lastly, remember to like, share and subscribe and see you guys in the next one. Bye!